Yo, what's up? After long consideration, I recently purchased the Canon C70 to add to our gear collection. And I think it makes a perfect B camera to the Canon C300 Mark III, but also a really great all-round camera to shoot on a gimbal, handheld, as well as on a tripod. We use it for various commercial jobs, as well as creating these YouTube videos. To make this camera nearly perfect, it does require a little bit of rigging. So in this video, I will go over all the parts that I use, the monitor, the cage, the top handle, the battery solution that make this camera really great as a handheld camera, but also go quickly to tripod as well as to a gimbal setup. My name is Damien Cooper and welcome to Monkey Pixel. <laughs> So let's start with my handheld rig solution. I've been shooting a lot of documentary content or a mixture between documentary and vlog style. And that requires a really nice handheld rig that isn't too heavy, but is still well balanced and has everything I need. And for this, I shoot a lot of manual focus, but also some autofocus. So I need a big bright monitor. I wanna have a top handle. I also want to have a shotgun microphone that works well. And I don't want to have a lot of cables. And naturally, I also want the entire rig to be well balanced when I'm carrying it for long hours. So without further ado, let's jump into our handheld rig solution. As our hard piece, we do need a cage. And I chose the cage from Tilta because it has a lot of mounting options that we can attach stuff to it. And I'm really glad with our purchase because it works out very well. One thing to note when attaching the Tilta cage, and that was kind of weird to me because you do have two screws on the bottom to attach it to your Canon C70, but it still does have a little bit of leeway up top. So what I did is I took a screw and I put it on the right side of the gimbal through the cage into the C70 because there is another tripod holder and that actually puts the cage firmly onto our Canon C70 and that works out very well. We need another small thing to make this handheld rig great and that is a NATO rail. And I chose a 90 millimeter low profile NATO rail by SmallRig. On this NATO rail, we can attach our top handle and that is what I will talk about a little later. On the bottom of our Canon C70 rig, we do have an advanced base plate that is Arca Swiss. And this one is crucial to attach it to our gimbal, the RS2, later. The good thing about this one right here is because of the weird tripod screws on the bottom of the Canon C70, is now we do have two vertical tripod screws. So this one sits very firmly and it doesn't wobble around at all. So I think this is a crucial kit for our C70 rig. All right, so let's get down to business and talk about the top handle of choice. I chose this small one from Small Rig, and I really happen to like this one because it is compact, it is adjustable, adjustable from the front to the back. And one thing I really do like is that it does have a built-in alley wrench, which comes in really clutch if you need to tighten some screws on your rig later on. So this one is a top handle that I really like. It's compact, it does have a cold shoe on top to attach our monitor mount to it. And it does obviously have a nader rail clamp on the bottom so we can attach it to our rig very easily just by sliding it on here and just tighten the screw. And then we have a top handle solution for our rig. Next up, we need a monitor. And my monitor of choice is the Swit CMS75C. And on my Canon C300 Mark III, I'm using an OCG7, but that is basically the same monitor with different branding. The only difference is that the one that I'm using on the Canon C300 Mark III does have SDI in, and that one is HDMI only, because obviously the Canon C70 doesn't have SDI, so we are fine with the HDMI only solution. So why did I chose this monitor over other monitors is because of its 3000 nit brightness, seven inch screen, so we can use it outside to pull focus manually. But one big difference to other monitors is that it has all the ports on the backside of the monitor. So this way we can power the monitor via a battery and we don't need the extra battery. And it's just really handy to have all of your ports on the backside if you wanna connect it 
to your camera because if you're using this small rig monitor mount that I'm using and I can highly recommend this if you have a field world monitor for example that has all its ports on the bottom of the monitor it is blocking the DC in port and that would not work for the rig that I am trying to build here but more on that a little later. This monitor we attach just via the cold shoe mount we screw it on here and voila, we do have ourselves a monitor on top of our Canon C70. Now let's get to our power solution. As you can see here, I'm not using the BP830 that came with the Canon C70, but I'm using a third party battery. And this one is from Petona, which is a German brand. And I think they are pretty easily accessible in Europe. There's different brands in the States as well as in Canada. So I will link different options down in the description below for you to check them out. What's really cool about those is they're basically of the size of a BPA60 batteries and it has roughly about 100 watt hours which is plenty for our Canon C70 because the Canon C70 is really power efficient when it comes to battery life. But the most important thing on these batteries is that you do have a D-tap out on this battery right here. And that means we can attach a cable from DTAP to DC out to power our monitor. And that not only makes it way more convenient because we only need one battery to power our C70 as well as the monitor, but it also makes the entire thing a little better balanced because if you do have a big battery on the front of the monitor, then that really off balances the entire rig. So those are the batteries of choice that I have been using on all of my work recently and I had no issues with those. I also like that you do have the battery indicator on the front so you know the battery status at all times. Cool. So now in order to attach the monitor to our C70, we have those two cables and that is a D-tap to DC input and that comes with the monitor, which is really cool. And it's also lockable so it doesn't just pull out of your monitor while on shoot. So I really like that solution. So we're going to plug in the monitor, tighten the screw. Then we have a short HDMI cable, which isn't too short. It could be shorter, but I'll be showing you why it's not that short. And then, I don't know if you can see it right here. We're just taking the DTAP cable and we are attaching it to our battery. And now we can power the monitor via this battery and the HDMI cable obviously goes into our camera. One last thing to say about that monitor and I have a full review of the OCG7 which again is basically the same monitor down in the description below so you can check it out if you want to but one last thing is that one thing I really don't like about that monitor is that it has a really long startup time of about seven to eight seconds, which is really unfortunate because the C70 basically starts up instantly. We do have our integrated LCD monitor, so it's not that big of a deal, but just so you know, that is the one thing that I don't like about that monitor. Again, full review on that monitor down in the description below. So one last thing we need to make our C70 rig complete for handheld shooting is a microphone. And I'm using the Rode Video NTG. And again, there's a full review of this microphone down in the description below. And I really like this microphone in combination with the Canon C70 for various reasons. Why am I not using an XLR microphone? Because the Canon C70 does have two XLR microphone ports. Essentially, there's different kind of factors that come into play. Number one, the audio quality on this microphone is actually great for a shotgun microphone of this size. Number two, it has the right compact size that works very well with the tilter cage and the seven inch screen because I can attach it to the Canon C70 without being blocked by anything. Number three is that it does have the option to control your gain on the microphone itself. And on the Canon C70, 
I don't really like the audio controls that are in the back of the camera that are mostly hidden by the LCD screen. And since we can now control the gain on our microphone, I think that this is actually the better solution. So I can highly recommend this microphone. I'm also using a windshield with it. There's also a link down in the description below to the microphone as well as the windshield. And that one works wonders. So I highly recommend getting this one as well. So attaching this microphone to our rig is fairly easy because we do have a cold shoe mount on the left side of our tilter cage. And that was basically the reason why I got the tilter cage because I was looking at other cages as well, but I was looking for a great solution to mount a microphone to it. And we can just slide the microphone onto the cold shoe, tighten it right here, and then we plug it into the microphone port. And now we have a really cool solution for handheld shooting on the Canon C70. And again, I can tilt the monitor all the way back and front and it's not touching the microphone. So this way we have a really good solution when shooting with this Canon C70 and we want to record on a shotgun microphone. I guess the very last thing to make our handheld rig complete is obviously our memory cards and I'm using Angelbird cards. I do have V60 cards as well as V90 cards, but V60 cards in the highest codec when shooting XFAVC in 25 frames, sometimes after 10 to 15 minutes, they run into slow buffer and slow card speed issues. So I highly recommend if you're shooting in that codec, use a V90 card. Before I start talking about our gimbal setup, let's do a quick mention of our tripod setup. As I have shown you in the beginning, we do have an Arca Swiss plate on the bottom to quickly attach it to our DJI RS2. But what if I wanna put it onto a Manfrotto base plate, which is the one that I'm using on all of my tripod work. I do have a Arca Swiss quick release plate. This one is from Serio, C-O-E, I don't know what that brand is actually pronounced, but there's various versions and I will link one down in the description below for you, but you can get them from Smallrick and other companies as well. And this one I attach to just a regular Manfrotto 501 base plate and you can attach this to basically all of your tripod plates that work with your fluid head. So here I just need to take my camera and then quickly attach the Manfrotto base plate Tighten it up on the back. And here we go. Now we do have a Manfrotto tripod plate, so we can just easily put that onto our tripod if we wanted to. As you've probably already noticed, the DJI RS2 is my favorite gimbal right now, as well as with the Tilter Advanced or Basic Ring Grip. And I also did a full review on the gimbal as well as on the ring. So they're all on our YouTube channel. There's links down in the description below or just browse our YouTube channel to check them out. But now I wanna go from our handheld setup that looks like this quickly onto the gimbal and back onto a handheld setup. And now let me show you how you can do this in a really short amount of time. So the first thing we need to do is detach our battery solution from our monitor because we won't be needing this one anymore. The next thing we need to do is also detach our battery and we will swap this with a regular BPA30 battery for various reasons. One reason we're using the BPA30 battery is because it's smaller and that way we have more room on our gimbal and it also makes the entire setup a bit lighter. But that way we do need a separate battery to power our monitor now but I'm just using the Sony NPF batteries. And I also like that this one is centered on the switch monitor because that also makes the entire rig, even on the gimbal, a little bit more balanced. So let's attach our Sony battery to the monitor. Then let's get rid of the monitor by unscrewing it, unplugging the HDMI cable and putting it on top of the gimbal, screwing it back on, and that was pretty simple. The next thing we do is we detach our microphone. And in case we want to record audio while shooting on a gimbal, we do have a DJI mounting plate attached to a small rig cold shoe mount. And again, I will link all of these down in the description below. 
and you'll probably need a longer cable for this. I chose a really small cable, but I usually have a longer cable to attach to my camera when shooting on a gimbal. Then next we are going to detach our top handle and we won't be needing this run right now. And then all we need to do is take our camera and slide it onto the gimbal, tighten it. And then I also have a USB type C cable detached that I will put into the side of the gimbal because that way I can trigger the recording of the Canon C70 via my side grip remote from Tilta that is here on my ring. Then we just attach the HDMI cable again. And if we had a longer cable, then we would detach the microphone too. And now we quickly went from handheld to gimbal mode. And if I wanted to switch back, it's just the opposite direction. And that goes very quickly. So we can quickly change from gimbal to tripod to handheld in a matter of minutes or even less. And it only takes less than a minute to basically go from gimbal to tripod. After trying out different kind of versions, different rigs on my Canon C300 Mark III, other cameras, the EOS R5, the Canon C200, I feel like this is the best handheld rig that I have ever had for various reasons. One, it's small and lightweight and very easy to quickly put on a gimbal, but it's also very well balanced. It has everything that I need. It has good autofocus. It also has great features with the built-in touchscreen that we can also use with our external seven inch screen. We do have a good way of attaching a shotgun microphone to our handheld rig when shooting documentary style, which was always a pain and still is on my Canon C300 Mark III. It does have great battery life included with these batteries, but also with the original BPA30s. So when shooting long hours on documentary shoots, vlogs, or whatever kind of commercial shoot you do, that is also very crucial. And just from my experience so far, I feel like the batteries last about 2.5 to 3 times longer than the same battery does on a Canon C300 Mark III. So overall, I really do like this setup. And in the beginning, I really wasn't sure because there is no native V-mount solution for this camera like I have on my Canon C300 Mark III. But with the power efficiency of the Canon C70, I don't really need that. So overall, I hope you liked this rig tour of the Canon C70 and if you're interested in more content on the Canon C70 behind the scenes as well as a full final review when I've been using this camera a little bit longer, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more, give the video a like because it really helps the channel grow and I hope to see you on the next one. So first things first, we will detach the back arm. Oh, wait. Okay. Wait. How did I stop? Oh. That was really loud, sorry. <laughs> okay.